Hey guys, what's going on? It is Alan here, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to make good quality videos using OBS. So, if you don't know what OBS is somehow, uh, I'll just show you the website, so you all have to do is just look at OBS on your browser, slash search engine, and you'll find this website here. Now, I wouldn't recommend the multi-platform Sometimes multi-platform works better for some people, but I just fully prefer the usual OBS. So just go here, click on that, and it will go straight into downloading. I'm not going to download it because I already have it installed. Yada yada yada. So uh, let's just go out. So once you finish installing it, you're going to have a page similar to this. So what you want to do when you get to this page is you want to actually make a scene. So I've already got my scene set up, but Basically, you want to just right click where it says scenes, add a scene, and just call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call this uh, tutorial. There we go. So you guys will see nothing on my desktop, nothing at all now. So uh, basically, um, I, I think I have to do something so you guys can see this, but basically when you get to down here, which is uh, you know the sources, you just have to go right click it, press add, and there are multiple options. Window capture is for capturing windows, so usually you want to use this for, uh, I, I guess you kind of want to use it for perhaps browser games? Probably browser games. Um, and you just hit OK, and you just, you know, you can do subregions, and you have like a color key so you can make things transparent. It's pretty cool. Uh, good. Uh, next thing we have here is a monitor capture. Now, this is what I have here. And it will basically capture your entire screen. So basically, it will just capture everything uh, you have here. So yeah, it, it's as simple as that. You just press OK. Uh, you can say to capture which monitor. So if you have two, three, or even four monitors, you can just uh, you know tell it to do a specific monitor. So you can choose the capture ca uh, mouse cursor. Uh, you can use point filtering. I don't know what that does, and I don't think it's good, but you never know. Opacity, so it kind of fades in and out when you use the opacity, so if 100% is like, you know, full, you can see it. 50% is kind of like faded, so you can see through it a little bit. Uh, you have the color key, same thing as last time, for transparent stuff, and the subregion, so that's simple as that. Uh, next you have the image. Now, image is one of my personal favorites that they have in OBS, because... With this, you can actually add an image to your screen. So if you have a logo you like to put in the corner of your video, to save you time editing afterwards, you just have to just, just tell it to put it there. So uh, you can also do this for uh, face cam overlays, which is what I use. So let me just go, for example, let me just look for uh, something random here. So it's like any of my logos anywhere. Um, let's just say I wanted to just do my uh, pingers, whatever, my, my YouTube logo. Let's just <laughs> go with that. Uh, you just adjust it. Now, here's a cool thing. Now, uh, to move your stuff around, so like your webcam or this type of stuff, you go edit scene when you're on the source. So if you're on this source here, you'll move the monitor around. If you're on, uh, what you call it, if you're on this source, which is this is my webcam, uh, you'll move my webcam around. But for image, you just want to shrink it down, make it, you know, all smallish. You just kind of just stick it in the top corner like that. Or you can just, in some occasions, make it transparent. So if I were to just go back to properties here and tell it, okay, I don't want uh, that orange in the background. So I just tell it that. But it will probably mess it up quite a lot. Yeah, it, it's not going to look <laughs> very good. I recommend cutting it out in Photoshop or Paint.net and make it transparent and all that crap. But I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't need it. Uh, next up is the image slideshow. Now, that isn't very important, but basically you just put some... Uh, it's for slideshows, basically, just, you know, usual, just slideshow stuff. Um, next you have text. Now, I've never used text before, because I don't even needed it, but if you wanted to put, like, some writing somewhere, like, if you're doing, on Minecraft, perhaps, I guess, um, you're doing a, I don't know, like a UHC, and you want to have, um, I guess, the server IP, or something in the top left, or top right, or wherever you want it, uh, you just use this, and you can put it anywhere you want. So if I can just tell it, I want the text, uh, big nuts, and then... 
Moments, like I just ended the recording by accident. Alright, so yeah, but anyway, it will give you something called Big Nuts, I think. Where is it? There it is, in the very top corner. And there you go. There's your Big Nuts. Uh, <laughs> next up, we have, um, what is next? Video Capture Device. Now, when it says that, it usually will mean your face cam, slash rip cam, whatever you want to call it. So, you just hit that, uh, whatever you want to name it. Um, and, uh, so many settings here. So, my webcam is the Microsoft LifeCam HD3000, it's an HD webcam. Uh, and, yeah, it, it gives you a lot of awesome settings, I feel, because you can flip it vertically so you're upside down, don't know why you want that, but you never know, horizontally. So, I'm going to actually give you an example of this. So, here's my face, I'm just going to make myself go all, all massive on you guys, I'm just going to make myself grow to a massive size, Blah. So... My room looks like this, on my webcam, on my face cam, it looks like this. But if I were to go back to the properties and all that, and if I were to say, flip it horizontally, it would flip my room around, so it's like, backwards, forwards, backwards, blah, 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 blah. So if you kind of prefer your room in a different way, or where you're recording in a different way, maybe you're like me and you want to have on the left side instead of the right side, it, it's all up to you. It, it really is. It's just your own personal decision. You can just have a toy around with that whenever you want. Um, and yeah, um, also, uh, if you have a configure option, usually it'll be just for video settings, so like, you know, do you want like high white balance or stuff like that, it's those types of things, you know, brightness, and I can make it super bright, make it super dark, but I'm just going to leave it at this here, because this is my kind of preferred settings. Uh, you guys probably can't, couldn't have seen that, but I'll just uh, re-show you that, but yeah, as I said before, just so you guys now can see this real quick. Uh, you will see that I just go to configure and I can just change brightness, whatever you want to change. Camera control, so you can zoom in a little bit. Uh, it's not going to work with mine, I don't think. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the other things you don't have to worry about, custom resolution, doesn't matter, FPS, usually won't matter. Uh, I don't think you can do 60 FPS ones, I don't, I don't think that's actually possible, but it might be. You can feel, oh, it might be possible, but probably not. Uh, and then you have input device, don't know why you need that one, and chroma key, which is, you know, for green screens, basically. Uh, all that type of stuff. So let's just move on, and the final thing I'm going to show you guys, I'm just going to uh, get rid of my face here, so bloop. Uh, yeah, the last thing I'm going to show you guys is the game capture. Now this is the most important thing for recording gaming videos, is because this records the games themselves. So it's good game capture. Now... Whenever you have games, um, just, you know, alright, so yeah, when you get to here, what you want to do is, uh, usually your game will be the top thing, just refresh a couple times, it won't show up, but usually with the top thing, uh, stretch image to screen, so, I had some problems once with my games, so basically what would happen when I'm, you know, playing my games, uh, was that, um, I would set it to the right resolution, everything would be ready, uh, but for some reason it would be zoomed in, that happens occasionally, but I figured out, you know, you just have to test the recordings before you make them, but if that ever happens, uh, please do enable this. Um, also, another thing is, um, if you're recording, uh, your, if your game is in 1920 by 1080p, um, what you'll want to do, if you want to record, okay, <laughs> I'm not explaining this right, um, so, if you're playing the game in 1920 by 1080 and you want the actual video to come out as a 720p format, what you want to do is you want to actually, you know, set the stretch image screen up. Because that will, uh, even if it is a 19 whatever, if it's a 1080p uh, game, you will still be able to record in 720p and that kind of saves time and file space, space, yada 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 yada, all that stuff. Now, I must just give you a word of advice when it comes to game captures, is that when you, you know, slip the game and you play it for a while, you record it and then you quit it, uh, when you're actually going to re replay a game or play a different game, you usually will want to go back into the settings here, and you will normally want to just make sure it's actually slipped to the right game, otherwise it might just, you know, you'll think you'll be recording the right game, but you actually won't be in the end. And I made that mistake once with a really important video, and, well, that sucked for me. Uh, so that's it for the sources and scenes, settings, all that crap. 
Uh, now next up we're going to have the uh, actual settings I have on OBS. Now this will vary, I'm telling you. I'm not like asking you, I'm not like <laughs> wondering, I'm telling you. The settings most likely in the end will not be the same as mine. Yours will most likely be different. So here's my settings. So uh, we have my UCBR tick. Now I would recommend it because the thing with quality balance and all that stuff, I'll just uncheck that for a second. But basically, you'll see here, this setting will determine the target at certain qualities, setting your bitrate and buffer size. So, basically, setting the the quality balance to a high value with low buffer size will just ruin the quality. And I just kind of prefer it with this on. Uh, and I would also enable CBR padding, because that is, you know, just, you need it, usually. Um, now, your max bitrate, now this, this will make up, like, this will be just, just definitely variant. Now, this will depend on, in some occasions, resolution, game you're playing, you know, uh, some games that are quite basic or plain, um, they will not need too much bitrate, uh, whereas games like Minecraft, um, you know, Battlefield, Call of Duty, they will need quite max bitrate, because, mainly because Minecraft, because Minecraft is uh, pixels, so it's... It's a lot of max bitrate. Um, a lot of people say, you know, oh, it's easiest to record uh, Minecraft, but it's actually not. Because, you know, all the pixels and it you know, makes it fuzzy if you don't get the right bitrate. But I would recommend 20,000 for usual recording stuff. And for your encoder, now this is uh, quite an important part as well. Um, to X264 will use your CPU. It's as simple as that. It's just going to use your CPU. Um, that's really all I have to say about that one. Uh, quick sync. Now, to get this enabled, you have to go to your BIOS settings, and it's really confusing, but I wouldn't recommend it in a lot of occasions. Um, uh, NVIDIA M N V E N C. Now, this is limited. Now, this can depend on your graphics card, and also, like, what type of graphics card you have. If you have an AMD, uh, OBS has, has a AMD version of this in beta at the moment. But I can't see that because I have a, a video graphics card. Um, now, um, this is important. Now, to decide whether you go with uh, the, the video one and the CPU one, is you want to check your system settings. Now, you can uh, go check those by just going to your file explorer. Let me just go to my videos real quick. So, just go to your uh, this PC. Go to I think you right you right click this PC. You go to properties, and you will find your settings here. So I have uh, eight gigabytes of uh, memory. I have a Intel i3 2100, 3.10 gigahertz processor. It's dual core, and it's hyper threaded, I think. Um, I got a 64 bit system as well. Uh, now to your graphics card. Now this can just vary. You might want to download a program, but if you have a Nvidia graphics card. Uh, you'll be able to right-click your desktop, and you'll be able to go to the NVIDIA control panel. For AMD, you will actually find that also on the desktop, usually. If you don't find it, you'll probably have to just, uh, just download an application that will tell you what you're using, or, you know, all that crap, you know, what graphics card you have, and all that stuff. Uh, so while I wait for the NVIDIA thing to load up, I'll just, uh, go back here. I mean, it's loaded up. Never mind. Alright, so let's go to my 3D settings. I think it's the right place to go. So I can check my... Uh, what you can call it, it's, uh, graphics card. I know which one it is, but I, I'm just, you know, <laughs> basically showing you guys. Uh, so let's go, oh my god, this is taking way too long. Uh, oh, oh, what happened there? Oh no, wait, oh, okay, here we go. So, is it going to tell you? No, it's not going to tell you. System information, maybe? Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, here it is. So I've got a GE Force GTX 750. It's actually a GE Force GTX 750 TIFTW, but it just doesn't bother to tell us that, which is annoying. But I know that I have a GTX 750 Ti. So um, I have a really powerful graphics card and a decent CPU. Um, now there will be one last thing that decides between you going with the CPU or the uh, graphics card one, because just one last piece of information is that the NVIDIA one, or the AMD one, will take your graphics card, it will take some of your GPU, which can lag your game, but usually not. But it will use barely any of your CPU, it will use like none of your CPU. Um, but yeah, but the thing with the NVIDIA one is that you usually need a higher bitrate, which is weird, but I just prefer the X264. Now, if you have a really, really bad processor, and a really good graphics card, 
go into the NVIDIA one, but there is one last chance you can have to get this one going there, X264. But I'll tell you that in a minute once I've finished going through this. Now, broadcast settings. Now, this will just depend, you know, you want to do file output or you want to do like your live stream. You have to choose your service, so YouTube, YouTube Gaming, Twitch, Good Game IU, Hitbox, whatever you want to use. Um, you set up all these settings. None of them are actually important too much. You know, none of them, you know, will affect the quality. But here, here's the video section. Just say yes. Uh, so, um, <laughs> where do I start? This is the video settings. Now, I will ask you for your video adapter, which basically means your graphical card. Uh, or just, you know, whatever, pretty much whatever, uh, your TV slash monitor is, you know, pretty much running off. So, uh, it's running off my graphics card, which is the GE Force GTX 750. Now, resolution. This can depend, uh, with some games, it's, you know, just different and all that crap. But, usually when you start a game up for the first time, it will be, uh, 19, uh, 1920 by 1080. Most occasions, but to turn it down, you just go to your settings and all that. But just look at your video settings on your game and just, you know, match the, the resolution with, you know, just these numbers here. So I'm recording my desktop, so I have to keep it at 1862 by 1058 because my TV is a bit weird and you have to do something to, you know, just. <coughs> excuse me. Um, to uh, make everything fit in the screen because it's a bit of a weird TV. But uh, here you have the resolution downscale, this is not important usually, so just don't worry about that. Um, your f FPS, now this. This is the matter between, you know, uh, a lot of things. So, 30 FPS is usually people's average. You know, it looks good. Uh, it's, you know, just, you know, classic gameplay. Now, the reason why I have it at 55 instead of 60 is because with 55 you get the same... You know, movement is 60 frames per second, but you actually uh, get less frame rate drops. That's in my opinion, anyways. But uh, the, thing, the difference between 60 and uh, 30 FPS is that 60 FPS it'll be more smooth, more fast moving. You get like better motion blur, um, whereas with 30 FPS it's kind of slower. Uh, but yeah, if I were you, uh, if you have a pretty bad system, I'd go with 30. If you have a pretty strong system, I go with uh, between 50 and 60 frames per second. Now, go to your audio, you have your just, you know, speakers, whatever you use to listen to your audio, and then you have your microphone, which, you know, whatever your microphone is. <laughs> uh, hotkeys. Now, this is just a simple start recording, stop recording, start stream, stop stream, all that type of stuff, you know, the push to talk, which I don't bother with. Um, alright, so, uh, let's go to your advanced settings. Now, this, this is the most important part out of everything you do. So, this is what it comes down to. So, if you have a quad-core system, I would recommend ticking multi-thread optimizations. Uh, yeah, pretty much if you have a quad-core and a pretty strong CPU, I would go with the multi-thread options, because it also depends on threads. Because my old CPU, it used to be hyper-threaded and a quad-core, so it would run this without a problem. But my new one, it's not as good, so... Uh, I don't have that ticked. Process priority class. Now, I would have that set to between above normal and high if you have a pretty uh, lower end CPU or an uh, okay CPU like mine. But if you have a pretty powerful CPU, I would personally go with the normal. Never go to idle. Just that straight up. Just don't go. Uh, disable encoding while previewing. That doesn't matter. Uh, allow other modifiers on hotkeys. I don't think that makes a difference for anything. Now, this will make a massive difference as well. Now, this is your CPU preset. Now, if you have a CPU similar to mine, you'll want to set yours to ultra fast and main. Now, basically, or actually, no, um, you can set it to high if you want. I just feel like main and high don't have much differences. Like, it, it just makes no difference to me. Um, but ultra fast will kind of, it, it, you know, pretty much. Setting this to slower will use, yeah, you need an i7 4790K to run this, to run it slower, because it uses so much CPU, it will crash your system if you use slower. Ultra fast, it means it uses like barely any CPU, but if you can see by the description, uh, if it will load up, it says, setting this value higher reduces CPU usage by sacrificing certain aspects of quality. Now, usually that won't make a difference because you can see my quality looks great uh, and all that stuff, 
But if you have a, a, a CPU like mine, I would go with either ultra fast or super fast. If you have a decent, you know, pretty decent good, slash good processor, I go for very fast, which is the average. Uh, if you have a flippin' powerful CPU, I would go for faster and fast. No higher than fast. Medium, slow, and slower are just gonna kill your system and make they're gonna make no difference to your quality at all. Which is the weird thing. Uh, scene buffering time. Now I have this at the 400. I'm not sure what this does, but my friend recommended it to me and it's working really well. So you know I had that all set up and all that crap. Uh, the rest of it is important. You know you can say allow 61 to 120 FPS in entry and video settings. Don't worry about that. Encoding full range. Don't worry about that. UCFR. Don't worry about that. Custom X264 encoder settings. Don't worry about that. The rest of the stuff. Don't worry about it. It's all fine. And that is it for the OBS settings. Now I have actually some more uh, speaking to do. <laughs> Sadly, to you know, just to inform you. Uh, so next up, you want to get Sony Vegas. Now, Sony Vegas is a great program. I'm gonna say right here, right now, it's amazing. But the thing is, it's not free. It costs a fair amount of money, but I'm sure there'll be some, you know, cracks around online for you to use. Um, yeah, when you have it downloaded, however you get it, uh, it doesn't matter. It ha I think it should be just uh, 10 or higher. Sony Vegas Pro 10 or higher. That's usually what you'd want to go for. But I have Sony Vegas 13. And uh, for Sony Vegas 12, and 13, you need a 64-bit system, and, well, if you don't have a 64-bit system, you're going to have to go with 11 or 10. So, um, let's just wait for this to load up. It takes a tiny bit of time just to load up, because I haven't used it a little bit. Um, so let's wait for it to open. Oh, la, 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 la. Oh, here we go, here we go. So, um, one thing is, oh, I nearly forgot something. Um, what you want to do first? Uh, before you put your stuff in Sony Vegas, is you want to get this program called FLV Extract. Now it's free, just look it up online, you'll find it, I'll just show you the folder where I keep it in. Here's the folder here, and basically uh, when, you do OB when you do OBS videos, it will automatically set the format to FLV, and FLV will not go into Sony Vegas. So you download this program, you say set it to MP4, uh, and then you just drag the video in, press start, and it'll take uh, probably a half an hour video, it'll take probably about 10 to 15 minutes to do. Once it's finished, you know, just close it down and stick your video in Sony Vegas. Um, I'm just gonna real quickly uh, do something. Uh, I'm actually gonna find one of my gameplays. So why not just stick Rocket League in? Because that's a video I'm actually just uploaded very recently, and I just don't see why not. So let's just make a new thing because this is actually a video that's coming up, which I've got in here. So let's just go here go to the video wherever that is and drag it in uh, now basically you can just after that just do all your editing all your stuff you know just add some music do all sorts of stuff that you want to do and after that you just want to wait for the building pigs to pick up uh, after that you actually want to go to your file and then render Give it some time here we go here it is so uh, it'll go to loading and render templates uh, so here is, you know, all the render templates, but it will load up. Let's take it a time. There we go. So uh, you'll have a list of things to do. Now uh, you'll have. Uh, I'm just going to close this down. Uh, you'll have all these things. Now you want to go for main concept AVC AAC, and you want to look for uh, Internet HD 720p or 1080p, depending on what resolution your gameplay is. And I've already got mine set up here, but I'm just going to show you basically what to do. So, um, frame size 1280 by 720 or whatever your resolution is going to be. Um, profile, make sure that's main. Frame rate, make sure that's the frame rate you put in OBS. Um, don't let it uh, just frame rate, by the way. Field order, none. Progressive, progressive scan. Pixel aspect ratio, whatever, that's a, whatever I've got here. Number of reference frames, two. Now, constant bitrate. Now, set that to what you had on OBS, which should be 20,000. But if you want to, if you want it to go like up and down, because that's fully up to you. Um, but uh, you see, with this one here, the constant bit rate, it will only show. You can't like change it, so you can't just make your own custom adjustments. But if for some reason you hit like nineteen thousand or something like that, go to variable bit rate and just set these both to nineteen thousand, and that will work just the same. So yeah, uh, when it comes to encode mode, 
render using QDA if available. Now, to check that, uh, you actually have to go to your system and go check DPU and it says QDA is available. Now, basically what QDA will do is it will take a bit of, you know, less of your CPU and it will manually use GPU to render videos. Now that, in my opinion, is amazing. It's such a useful thing to have available. But, uh, yeah, if you don't have QDA, just render using CPU only, or maybe if you have OpenGL, that'll work. Uh, make sure your enable progress def uh, download is ticked. Now for audio, now this just depends on your OBS. Uh, I actually forgot to go over this now that I think about it. Let me just go here. Uh, usually you want to just go for what I've got, 128, format, 48k DHZ. Uh, but I have it set to this for some reason. I'll just leave it like that. It's fine. It won't make a difference. Uh, format will be automatically MP4. Uh, rendering quality, that's up to you. I would go for best or good. Never preview draft. Unless your preview is like really high quality for some reason. <laughs> I don't bother with that because it will just kill your CPU. Uh, Stereophophic, whatever you guys say that. Uh, 3D mode, just use project settings. Color space, default. Boom. Done. Now, uh, make a name for your profile. So I, I just call mine and use it. Uh, and then hit save, and then hit OK. So then just hit render, you're rendering your video out, yada yada bloop, and yeah. Um, after that video, now you guys are going to be like, holy crap, that output was massive. But, because you know for this Rocket League video here, when I rendered it, it was 4.94 GB. Now you guys are like, what are you talking about? It's at 1.54 GB. Like, what am I talking about? And this video here, this was this this was five gigabytes flat, and it's at 1.29. Now you guys are like, how did you get that low? Because when you have high gigabytes for your thing, it will be a waste of storage, and it will take too long to upload. So how I did it is I downloaded this amazing program called Handbrake. Now basically, Handbrake will um, get your video or such videos, and it will just make it look incredible. Like, it will probably up the quality a little bit, and it will lower the file size by over half. You heard me. Half the file size. For me, it went down like 3 GB, which is uh, 3,000 megabytes, which is massive. You know, some some games that you play online, you know, maybe, I don't know. Mm. Uh, I guess no, TF, TF2 is massive, but whatever games is like 3,000 MB, that's it. But to get Handbrake... You need to go to your Google, whatever you use, and look up just Handbrake into your search engine, whatever. Uh, just go Downloads, download the Handbrake tool. Now, uh, you know, you go 64-bit or 32-bit. If you're on Mac, just click on that one there. Ubuntu, you have no idea what the hell that is. Uh, you got Source Code, Command Line, that's all not right. You don't need those two. Nightly Builds, no, you don't need anything yet. So when you download it, run, it to, run it the installer, and once the installer is finished, just uh, open it. I'm just gonna open my handbrake real quick. Uh, just type in here handbrake. Oh, I forgot the <laughs> forgot the D. Handbrake. It's opening up in a second, or will probably open any moment now. Um, yeah. So let's just wait for that to, to open up. Handbrake. It's taking its time. Here it is. Here. Now, what you want to do is you want to get your gameplay. So say I want to do Rocket League again for some reason, because I don't think I can make it much smaller. But you just drag it in here, and it will just say, okay, um, scanning source, uh, you've got a video here. Now, here you want to just go browse, uh, wherever you're going to put your file out to, so just go desktop. Make a name for the file, so just go ASDFFF, and then hit save. And then we hit save, you'll just uh, hit uh, start, and it'll take a little bit of time, it'll use all your CPU for a little bit, so it'll probably make a PC a little bit, but afterwards it will be guaranteed worth it. So that is it for the video, once you finish that, you just have to go to your YouTube, just going to open my page real quick, um, just go to your page or wherever you are in your browser, hit that upload button, and then, that's it, just go upload, upload your file, and you're done! So that's it for this video, hope you guys did enjoy it, um, I honestly, I had a, like a lot of fun making this video. It's quite a long video, but it's very instructional and all that, and it will get you top quality videos, for sure. I I'm calling it for sure. But, uh, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. My voice is sore from all this bloody talking, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys!